What's up? What did y'all is EJ O E Business? Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy my reaction. If this is your first time here, once again. All right, anyways, so what we are getting into right now, people have been telling me to check out this channel. Um, it took me a minute because I was like, they just like some of the titles of the stuff I was like, I don't really want to see, you know, just to be honest with you, because I know a few people, they've been wanting me to look at this, but hey, I found something and the channel is um, the real South Africa. So that's what it is. All right. So I'm about to check this out right here. So this is the first thing I'm doing on the channel. All right. So you guys told me a lot about it. You told me to check it out. So guess what, man, I'm here. And the name of this um, video is South Africa, African-American couple living in South Africa promotes the country to the US citizens. All right, let's see what it is, man. Mark Blanton and his wife, Dr. Latasha Blanton, are an African-American couple who live in Centurion. Among their business ventures, they run a website, therealsouthafrican.com, a platform that aims to provide fellow African-Americans an experience that is the antithesis of how Africa is portrayed in the United States. And they're joining us this evening to talk to us about what drew them to South Africa and how their counterparts have found Mzansi when they joined the couple. Good I like that straight up they just showed the reason I like that because that's so much the truth because you guys do not understand how little we know about like South Africa just Africa out here you know it's like you have to find out stuff on your own which I it's natural you know now because you could go on YouTube and all that but like how I just started doing like all the um, South African music, you know, what first got on from Nasty C and then on, I just got like curious about it, you know, just of Africa period, you know, and then most of it in South Africa, you know, cause you know, I get a lot of love from out there. So, you know, I just wanted to start looking into different things. So anyways, all right, let's go back to this. All right, I'm done. See what they got to say. And thank you so much for your time tonight. I'm going to begin with you, Mark. What attracted you to South Africa? Well, it was it was a, a a trip that I came on many years ago, back in 2010, during the World Cup. And then once I got here, you know, I heard you know many things about South Africa, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. But once I got here, it was absolutely incredible. Um, you know, the the outreach and the pouring of, of of love that I got from the people here. So that was the biggest. Um, draw for me to come to South Africa. That's how I kind of feel too. Um, I don't know if it's true. You know what people, um, what they were saying, how just when like a lot of black people from the U.S. whenever we go over there, I guess it's a big deal. Well, like obviously it's a big deal for us, but um, I heard it's like. A lot of people, they like that because they figure how we're coming over there to the motherland, how we're just learning, you know. So um, that's what I heard. All right, let's go. And have we as South Africans lived up to your experience in 2010? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, every every day is, a, is, a, is, is great here. Uh, we actually enjoy our time. Um, we're just happy, you know, to be part of, the experience and having the opportunity to um, get the chance to, you know, learn all the cultures and, and the languages and things along that line. So it's, 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 it is definitely, you know, reached up to my expectations. And Dr. Latasha, I'd like to bring you into this conversation. What perceptions did you have when you were first making your trip to South Africa? I didn't really have any real perceptions. I had no real desire to actually come to Africa. There's a lot of African Americans that feel the same way that I do, simply because of what we're told about the continent in general. And then when you're thinking about South Africa, the only thing you ever hear about is apartheid and a lot of the crime that goes on. So when he came here in 2010. Very true. That's everything she just said is the truth. 
Except with me, I didn't know about apartheid, you know, because I just didn't, you know, before. What, till what was it, like three years ago when Trevor Noah talked about it when I was, uh, he was on the radio station. But anyways, you see what she said? That's totally the truth right there. Let's go back just a little bit. So you guys hear with what she just said, yo, which is the freaking truth. Oops, I didn't mean, hold on, hold on. Why did just, I messed up. Hold on. I messed up, but now we back. You ready? Let's go. And come to Africa. There's a lot of African Americans that feel the same way that I do, simply because of what we're told about the continent in general. And then when you're yeah. thinking about South Africa, the only thing you ever hear about is apartheid and a lot of the crime that goes on. So when he came here in 2010 and his mind was blown and he came home and wouldn't stop talking about it, uh, to the point to where the South Africans that he met while here were so welcoming and they decided to invite us into their home. When we came for Christmas in 2011, it just made sense that um, I had been wrong about what I had been told my entire life regarding the continent and especially South Africa. So my perceptions were quickly debunked when I got here. Yes. And um, it just, I was like, I feel like I wish I had known about South Africa much sooner than I did. That's totally the truth right there, man. That's totally the truth. That's crazy. She said exactly everything she just said is the truth. Like what a lot of us, we don't know about Africa was out there. We go with what we see. We go with what we heard here, you know, and all that. What we just think, what most of us, what we think with rap, we would think everybody has an accent. I did not know Nasty C was from South Africa. When it when I found out, it blew me away. Heard A Reese, I was like, he doesn't sound like it. What, um, Stogie? No, I wouldn't have known because of their accents, you know, because I didn't hear it. And then I heard Youngster, he has an accent, and then I heard other people. But this is the truth right here. I would have never thought what when I heard Nasty C, Megan, please. I would have never thought that because I was like, man, he sounds American. Then I just learned everything she just said is the truth. You know, what we hear out here is straight up a stereotype. We don't know shit. All right. Anyways, here, go back. <laughs> And let's talk then about this website. It's a website to debunk uh, the myths that a lot of, you know, uh, as you say, African Americans have about the continent and South Africa. What prompted uh, the two of you to start it? Well, it was it's, it's, you know, a very good question. Um, you know, we would go back and forth on, on a regular basis. When, you know, we own our own company um, in the United States, so we were able to you know, leave. Um, you know, when we could, um, normally for like two weeks at a time, maybe a month. So every time we went back and forth, we had friends of ours that kept asking us, you know, you know, what's the deal? Why do you keep going to South Africa? Like, what's really going on over there? Um, and it got to the point to where it was like, okay, we need to, you know, we can't actually reach out to everyone. So we, we made a website um, and we, we chose the name The Real South Africa simply because we wanted people to get to know The Real South Africa. And, 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 and how has it been received? Are you finding more and more people are curious and coming through? I would say a lot more people are curious about coming through because even when you do a Google search for South Africa, unfortunately, what you're going to get is a lot of negative stuff. Yeah. So what we make sure we do, no matter what, is put out all of the positive experiences that we've had since we've been here. That is so true. I'm serious. That's why a lot of times whenever I do reviews on like documentaries or anything on South Africa, I said that. I think like it was either like the second or third when I did, I talked about, I don't really see a lot of stuff that's positive, you know? Like I have to go through things and look for stuff, you know? Or if I end up finding something, I have to, it's the truth. <laughs> and all of the times that we visited, We've never had a negative experience. Not one South Africans have been amazing to us. And we want other people to understand that they can have that same experience. And number two, South Africa is not 
I won't say a poor country, they're not in a place where they need help, per se, and there's not animals running around. <laughs> there's people um, are not living in huts, like there's actual houses. So just to let them know that the country in and of itself is very functional, has an amazing infrastructure, and just have them believe that when they come here, they will see people who are doing beautiful things, running businesses, um, having a good time, enjoying their families and their friends. So that's the whole point that we want to show people in America that look like us, that when they come here, they're going to see people that look just like them doing the same things that they do back home, and it's just better here. Yeah. And Mark, we can never have a conversation about South Africa and the United States without looking at what is currently happening in the country where you both come from. We're seeing lots of protests around the Black Lives Matter movement, and we saw the latest incident of the shooting of a man who's now left paralyzed in hospital, and really some protest scenes that we have been seeing coming out of that country. When you look back and you look at these protests, how does that make you feel? Well, uh, honestly, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost par for the course um, as, a, as, a, as an adult male, um, you know, black male from the United States. I can honestly tell you that the, the things you're seeing now are things that have been happening a long time ago. Um, so that it's, it's very uh, systemic um, to the point to where, you know, now that we're, we're repatriated back here in, in South Africa and seeing what we see, um, it's very, it's very disheartening, and we do feel, you know, uh, pretty bad, you know, for those that those are that are at home, because some of the conversations that we have are aren't very pleasant at all. Um, and of course, we always encourage those to say, you know, what there is a, another option, um, and you know, you should come to South Africa. I think that you would um, find some peace, uh, you know, at, in, 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 in all regards. And Dr. Latasha, when you see people protesting on the streets this time, we saw protests even, uh, you know, gaining momentum all across the world after the killing of George Floyd. Do you think now um, there might be some change or even the, a moving of a needle here? Hell no. My personal opinion is that until America actually deals with their racism problem. Were you recently interested? A commercial. It doesn't matter how much we protest. It doesn't matter how much we do all the things that they tell us will affect change. They're going to have to do some real hard soul searching. So as far as moving the needle, it might move it an inch. But as far as like real change, I don't think that that's going to happen until they address the actual problem. And U.S. elections are coming up very soon, and we're seeing lots of candidates are coming out. Uh, of course, right now, Joe Biden there, President Donald Trump coming out, trying to promise all sorts of things to Americans. When you look at this, uh, Dr. Latasha, do you believe that uh, there's a sense that America could move towards a different direction? And what are you hoping for when, and when election day comes and goes? As far as the movement in a different all right, before she goes, all right, because look, as of right now, what is November 21st right now, okay? The elections happen on November 6th. I think that's what um, what it is, all right? So let me just speed it up because some people want to know, all right? So Donald Trump, he lost, all right? He lost. He lost to Joe Biden. It was a record for um, the most people coming out to vote, all right? Um, Donald Trump lost by like, Five million, damn near five million for popularity votes. Okay, so it was a lot of mail in ballots. Okay, all right, I'm just trying to go. There's a lot of mail in ballots because of COVID. A lot of people didn't go. So, you know, Donald Trump and a lot of people, they think it was a bunch of BS. They're all like, nah, 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 we didn't lose. We didn't lose. You know, all the mail in ballots, like they're basically saying they shouldn't have counted. You know, that's what it comes out to. Basically, that's what they're saying. So they're having recounts, you know. So uh, that's what's going on, okay? Joe Biden won, but they're doing recounts because Trump thinks he won, okay? And in Georgia, uh, they're counting by hand, supposedly. And Pennsylvania, they're going to do it by hand where there's millions and millions, okay? So one last thing about how I feel with the election. I feel that there's cheating in every election, every election, every election. I think there's cheating no matter on 
on both sides, okay? Now, I understand that there's more on this time, this time because there's mail-in ballots. All right, I'm just saying that because as of um, right here, obviously, the election didn't go on, okay? So, I wanted to tell you that. All right, I'm done. Different direction. I do believe for myself that if Donald Trump is elected again, there will be no resemblance of what America used to be. It will never be the same again. There is a little bit of hope left if Joe Biden is elected, but he will need to put together an agenda that is specific to black people. The problem with putting together an agenda specific for black people is that it offends the majority of the people in America who happen to be Caucasian. So having to include us in any type of conversation offends them. But until they actually do that, nothing's going to change. So we're still going to cast our votes even all the way here in South Africa because we do believe that we still have a responsibility. All right, hold on. Now that's true right there, okay? And let me tell you something, how they just did an election um, again. Look, at they had what Donald Trump, he made out something for black people. It's called the Platinum Plan. Why is shit called Platinum? A Platinum Plan. But anyways, it was supposed to go towards African Americans were helping out with small businesses and, you know, giving money to the community. All right, for Joe Biden, I don't know what the hell he's going to do. All right, so that's it. Ability as American citizens to make sure that the people that are there, until they can find an alternative, that we do our part in making sure that they have a safe place to live. And Mark, there are some people that are saying that it's time for a young president. And real quick, real quick, all right, I'm done after this. This has to do with the, um, you know, the presidency. All right, here I'm gonna tell you something. There's always been a lot of racist people, no matter what, everywhere, everywhere always been racist people but when donald trump won for some reason it felt like it brought just more racist people out like it was crazy it was like they were hidden but when he won it's like hey like they just come out like nothing everybody's not racist i don't think that okay there's only a, a small percentage of people but that's what's up okay i just want to say that all right because you know talking about the government and all that so i try to speed it up because what we're looking at this right here what and what shit already happened. So I just want to tell you, all right. Someone who is, you know, in their thirties or something, do you think it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's really an unfair call uh, looking at the current candidates that uh, America has? Well, um, like I said, you ask, you ask for someone who's a little biased. Um, simply One more thing, all right. And the two candidates, the oldest mother, two old ass white men, all right. Straight up, I think Trump is like 70-some, and I swear Biden looked like he's 98, all right? So, yes, they're old right there. Two oldest people, what, Joe Biden, what, so far, oldest president is going to be old. But, you know, Trump, he was already oldest. All right, guess what, you guys? I'm done. Let's watch this. Enough talking, all right? I won't stop anymore. Because when I was... Um, you know, in the U.S., I worked for the U.S. government. I was actually U.S. Secret Service, and I was under Joe Biden's detail when I was there. And uh, and what I do know about him is it, 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 it makes me feel like you know there there is an, an opportunity. And I'm pretty sure that um, you know people see the president of the United States. Um, normally, they build teams around them, and there are there are plenty of of, of young, energetic people who are who are on the staff. Maybe not the senior levels. But they are on the staff, and they, they and they do make a difference. So, um, like I said, I'm a little biased, but at the end of the day, um, I would love to see um, you know Joe Biden become the president of the United States, and hopefully, he will address the agenda um, that Tasha talked about just a few minutes ago in reference to Black Lives Matters and just Black um, people in general in the United States. And Dr. Latasha, um, you know, something that really a lot of people have been talking about, the concerns around the deaths that we have been seeing linked to COVID-19 in America and how that situation has been handled. As you watch developments in South Africa, because there was a concern that South Africa was going to find itself, you know, very in a very, very bad position. Yes, we are in the top five in the country, but the numbers are seemingly somewhat showing a downward trend. When you look at how the United States has handled this pandemic. What do you make of it? I'm actually embarrassed that the America that everyone is shown is lacking so terribly in leadership. One thing that we've been saying, even when we post, you know, on our social media, 
We show people here in South Africa doing what the president asked to do without any real protest. So for me to see them in a situation that they truly do not have to be in, it's embarrassing and it's hurtful because we have family that's there. Um, we have you know, people that we love that are subjected to people who are protesting wearing masks that are gonna keep them safe. We have people in the states that believe that their disease is not real. We know people that have had it and have recovered and some that have died. So for them to take that stance because of leadership is embarrassing and disheartening. And I really wish it wasn't the case, but to talk to the Americans that we have the um, pleasure of talking to, whether they be family or potential clients, they all are at, in awe of the fact that South Africa has done such an amazing job. And that's one thing we've been telling people. South Africa did it right. Yeah, people still passed away, but they also understood that they didn't do anything, i.e. like America, we would be in a much, a much different position. And understanding that people were expecting Africa and South Africa to do so poorly. So for them to yeah. do better, I'm like touting my chest. I'm like, yeah, because we're better than that. And I say we because I really do feel like I'm a part of this country now. So I can appreciate how it was handled. And Mark, how difficult has it been then? Because when you look at what the governors, because the governors appear to be doing their own thing and the president is doing his own thing, and it doesn't look like there's synergy there. How, how then was that difficult when it comes to maintaining and even keeping those numbers low in the states? Well, um, you know, the way the United States is set up, and I will never sit here and give you a, a history lesson. I mean, there are, they are individual states, and then you also have, you know, you have federal, um, you know, level, then you have state level or provincial level, and states do have their rights, and they do have a chief executive that, that for each state or each province. And so since the leadership did not um, come from the, um, the, the, the federal government or the central government, then each, each um, state needed to figure out individually because normally they just, hey, the, the federal government says this, this is what we all do. But when there is no leadership, they, li they literally have to fend for themselves. And as a final question for me in 30 seconds, uh, Dr. Latasha, when you, you, you know, when we now have international travel, everything is now open after COVID-19, South Africa is back to working again, because I know we're still in level two right now. What do you say to someone who's watching right now in the States, who's planning maybe next year sometime when we find ourselves uh, somewhat back to, you know, a little bit of what seems like normality. What do you say to them as you try to attract them again to South Africa? The same thing that I always tell them, it's never too soon to plan a visit to South Africa. South Africa is open, it's waiting for you, it's beautiful, and I promise when you get here, it will over deliver, and we will make sure that you have an amazing time. So we always encourage people to come to South Africa and just see it for yourself, because what we're showing you is basically what we can show you, but you have to experience it and feel it, and that's the thing that we want everyone to know. you got to feel South Africa. <sighs> that was good. That was a good interview. Um, I liked how I think I think that was pretty cool. I agree with everything they were saying too about the government and nothing's gonna change. I feel out here. Black Lives Matter. People are gonna still have a have a problem and all that. Anyways, let me know how you guys feel about that, all right? That was the first thing I did for the Real South Africa channel. All right, there we go, man.